I don't know about you, but I've been wanting to try out Edwardian underwear for a long time now. There's just something so intriguing about the combination of a corset and a chemise with the loose fitting split drawers that they wore through the Victorian and Edwardian periods. I decided it was time to try to make my own and I found a helpful tutorial straight from 1916 available for free on the internet and decided to draft my very own Edwardian split drawers. To draft your own split drawers pattern, you will need a large piece of pattern paper, a yardstick or a meter stick, measuring tape, a drafting ruler that is clear, and a pencil. In this case, I'm using a Sharpie just so you can see it better on camera. The measurements you're going to need are your waist measurement, your hip measurement, and the waist to your bend of knee measurement. So you're going to start with the measuring tape up on your waist and measure all the way down vertically to where your knee bends. And although I took my measurements in metric, I recommend using imperial since this particular tutorial uses imperial. So the first line we're going to need to plot is line AB, which is your waist to bend of knee measurement. Next will be line AF, which is at the top of line AB. It is your quarter waist plus a half inch. Next is line FG, which is going up from point F, and it's your, an eighth of your waist measurement. So next is line AC, so C is going to be on that AB line, and it's half of your measurement of line AB, minus two and a half inches. Now we're going to be plotting our center seam and the bottom edge of our drawers. So we're going to measure out a perpendicular line from point C, and this, we're going to be plotting point H on this line, which is half of your hip measurement plus half an inch. So now we're going to be drawing out another perpendicular line from the bottom of AB from point B. And we're going to be plotting point I. So line BI is simply your waist measurement. And this is along, again, the bottom edge of your drawers. Okay, so now we're going to draw a perpendicular line up from point I. This is line IJ. For now, it has no definite length because what we're going to be doing is holding our ruler at an angle from point H and pivoting our ruler so that when we measure 7.5 inches down from point H, it will touch line IJ. Now for me, this didn't quite work out for some reason just because of the way my measurements work, so I did have to slightly fiddle around with it just to get the general shape right. This is what it should look like. So now we're going to be working on the top edge of our drawers and the final details. I want to show you what the final drawers will look like just to demonstrate that the top edge of the back of the drawers is different than the top edge of the front of the drawer. And we're also going to be working on finessing the back pleat line, which is at the top of the bum area, as well as marking the grain line of these drawers. So we're going to be plotting both the front top edge and the back top edge on the same piece of paper. They're going to be over top of each other, so it's going to look a little confusing, but as long as you know which line is for which part of the drawers, you should be fine. Okay, so we're going to start out by plotting line LH, which is five inches, and it's just a continuation of that slanted line that we already plotted going down. Now we're going to be working it up. And again, line LH is five inches. You can see this is what it should look like at this point. So now we're going to do line LM, which is 1.5 inches, and it's going perpendicularly out from line LH like this. Now here I realized I made a slight mistake with one of my top measurements, so I just had to slightly shift one of those points that we drafted earlier. But as long as you followed my instructions, you shouldn't have this problem. So now we're going to be plotting line AD. So D is along that, that line starting at point A and it's a quarter of your waist measurement plus two inches. So now up from that point D is line DE and it's 1 12th of your waist measurement.
So now we're going to be connecting points E, M, and H. So for this, I'm just using my drafting ruler. It has a nice hip curve on it, which is a nice shallow curve. And I'm just connecting those points. And so this is going to be forming one of the center seams of our drawers. Okay, so now we're going to do line HN, which is four inches up from point H. And line NO is four inches out on a perpendicular from point N. And there we go, that's what it should be looking like at this point. Okay, so now we're going to connect points G, O, and H with another curved line. And this is going to be forming our back center seam. Now we're going to do line A, G, which is a curved line and will form the back waistline, so the back top edge of the drawers. And line AE is another curved line and this will form the front waist, the front top edge, and this is what it should look like. Okay, so line A P is going to be two and three quarter inches. Apologize, you can't see what I'm doing right here. So it's just measuring out from point A. Line CR is going to be six inches. And now what we're going to do is just connect point P and R, and this is going to be the grain line of our pattern. When we're laying it out on the fabric, we want the grain line to be going along that direction. And now we're going to measure out from point G, three and a half inches. This is point S. And now line S to T is just a perpendicular line out from that top line. And this is going to be our pleat line for that back pleat that we talked about earlier that will be over the bum area of the drawers. And it just helps preserve some modesty given the split crotch of these drawers. Okay, and then finally line BK is the curve for the bottom edge, which you can see I already drew in at this point. I mostly did it freehand. You can use a ruler if you have one that's big enough for this. So one of the question marks I have at this point is I didn't bother with doing the actual waistband in the mock-up or doing an actual closure method. I did make a last minute decision just to open up the side seam and then pin it closed at the top here because it occurred to me that it might be better to have a side opening closure than a front opening closure simply because I kind of like that it's sewn together at the very top before it goes into the split crotch, just it gives a little more modesty that way. So at first I was imagining doing a button opening on the waistband, having the waistband overlap itself and then have a button in a buttonhole there. But on second thought, I'm kind of thinking it might be nicer just to have a tie closure. I have seen examples of both in historical drawers, both a tie closure as well as button closures. Sometimes the closure might just be on one point of the drawers, either the front or the back, or it might be on both sides. And the same thing with the button situation. So as I said, originally I was thinking of the buttons, but I'm thinking ties could be a better idea simply because they're more adjustable and right now this waistband, it's not a gathered waistband, it's not a drawstring, it's exactly tailored to fit my waist the size it is right now, but I kind of think if I'm making this for everyday wear long term, it might be nice to have that adjustability with the fit of the waist. 
Okay, everyone, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss my future videos about the making of these drawers, as well as my experience wearing them in my day-to-day -day wardrobe in a Canadian winter, no less. I'm so excited to share my experience with this historical type of underwear with you all. And again, thanks so much for joining me on this adventure. You won't want to miss the experience of sewing these drawers. See you all in my next video.